Okay, so a few people have been emailing me asking me um, if I had any good advice for, you know, people taking calculus for the first time in college. So um, I don't know if it's good advice, but at least, uh, you know, here's some, I don't know, maybe some things. So, um, you know, I've taught calculus at a few different places, um, and, you know, definitely not everywhere is the same. Um, but, you know, I think these are kind of good generic tidbits. So, a couple assumptions here at the beginning. Um, one is that you're at least mildly motivated um, about being in college and about taking calculus. Um, if it's completely miserable and it's something you're just trying to get through, um, I'll talk a little bit about that as well. That's fine. I understand. There's certainly no problem with that. Um, I had classes where I just wanted to get through them. Um, if math is one of yours, that's A-OK. -okay. Um, but I'm kind of talking, I guess, probably maybe a little to the, a little more to the slightly more motivated person. But maybe you're just nervous like I was. Um, I really had no idea what to expect. So first thing here, hey, it's not high school. Um, and I, 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 when I say that, I mean a couple things. One, you know, I, I've seen people that made fives on their AP test. Um, that did really well in high school that go to college and flounder and I think there's a couple reasons for that one a lot of high schools are worried about you know just test scores which is unfortunate um, that's the practicality of it I think at the moment so they are a lot of schools teach you know teach students how to take a test okay but you may know how to take a test but you really don't know what's going on you haven't you don't really understand a lot of the concepts. You maybe know the formulas. And, you know, in college, they're going to, in, in, in a typical college class, they're going to certainly focus much more on theory and, you know, a little bit, uh, well, a lot more about what's really going on. And that's the harder part to understand. So um, just be ready for a change of pace. Also, too, when I say it's not high school, um, if you're a freshman, this may be the first time you're out there on your own, so um, at least that was my experience, and you know nobody's going to make you do the things you need to do, so that's another thing to keep in mind. But more what I mean is, just from a, a rigor standpoint, it's going to probably be tougher than what you've seen. Um, again, maybe not though. Um, the second thing, which is also unfortunate, your instructor may or may not really care about you or teaching the class. This is also, um, you know, I think this is definitely the exception and not the rule. Um, I think most teachers, I, I would like to think that most teachers at college are pretty happy about being there um, and really have, you know, that on their mind. Unfortunately, you know, a lot of the top name, you know, schools, those people get paid to do research, and sometimes teaching, I think, can be a little bit of a necessary evil. So, you know, if you get to a class where you have somebody that's less than enthusiastic, um, you know, it just may happen. So, one of two things, either bear with it, or, you know, at least what I did was, you know, it's hard to if you're a freshman, but um, if it's your very first time. But after that, make some buddies and ask around. You can usually figure out, you know, what you need, um, you know what your needs are um, and two things as well you may find a professor that's hard but that may be great for you you know if you're going into engineering or maybe thinking about doing grad work um, you want a tough professor a lot of times and, and those are going to be the people that are going to I think be a little more challenging if you're just trying to get through the class obviously look for the person that's going to be maybe uh, you know a little more lenient when it comes to it so all I'm saying is don't, you know, don't take a, a, an easy A for, you know, a professor who really doesn't teach that well, but you know they're going to be easy. You know, take the person that expects more out of you. Um, again, it's easy for me to say because I am done with school and it feels very good to not have to do all this again. So, um, even if you're a professor, no matter what, I tell all my students, go meet your professor. And this is true for any math class, not just calculus. Um, or just, I don't know if I said any math class just now, any class period. Um, you know, I, I, introduce yourself. Be nice, be cordial. Um, if you have some fears or concerns, tell them. You know, if the professor's a douchebag, then just bail out and say thanks. You know, don't be rude, but you know, unfortunately, you may have one. Um, you know, it's nice when I think instead of having this kind of teacher-student relationship, which will still be there, it's nice to chat a little bit. I think, uh, um, you know, 
you see each other as human beings instead of just you know you're the student and I or you know and I'm the teacher or vice versa. So, um, you know, again, again, take it or leave it. I, I was bad about not meeting professors, but as I went through it and started doing it a little bit more, it helped. Okay, some some so some actual math related stuff here. Um, you've got to make sure your algebra and trig skills are sharp in most calculus classes, um, in any calculus class. I say most because some of them will let you use a calculator. Um, any, I think, decent math class, in my opinion, college calculus class will not let you use a calculator. And um, I would wager to say the majority of classes you can't use a calculator, and that's a shock for a lot of students. Um, you know, Texas Instruments, I think, is destroying a generation of math students. But again, uh, that's my own opinion. It, uh, it, you know, if you're really calculator reliant on graphs and arithmetic, you're going to find, you know, when you're taking a test, you're going to be under the gun and you're going to have to crank through a lot of this stuff on your own. And that can be hard. And this is, I would say, probably 95% of the people I see that fail calculus is simply because their algebra skills aren't up to par. So, a lot of most classes they'll do a review at the beginning, um, or at least they'll give out review problems. I would say absolutely do all of them. It's one of the biggest things you can do. Make sure your basic trig skills are there, trig identities. Um, you know you should know values on the unit circle. You should be able to figure out sine of pi over four without a calculator, or secant of seven pi over six. I I think, um, again, whether or not I could have done it is <laughs> a different matter, but if you can do it, it'll, it'll put you in good shape. So, again, I think algebra is the big thing that gets a lot of people. It's just there's so many little things to remember it, and that makes it hard. So, the good thing is I've got videos on most of it, so at least you can uh, find it somewhere. Um, read the book. This is like a revelation for most people, and I'm still not quite sure why. Um, math is one of the only, it seems like, what, I, maybe it's a lot of the sciences. Nobody reads the book, um, and I'm not sure why. I think people say it's confusing. Um, yes, you know, it probably is. I've read philosophy books that were immensely confusing, and there were no formulas in those. I mean, again, things are confusing, so it gets harder. Um, I, by reading the book, you're going to get more familiar with notation. Um, you'll just get more comfortable with the terminology, and that's a big deal. Um, you know, a lot of people, what they're teaching as well is coming straight from the book. A bad teacher will do things straight from the book. Obviously, you've got to talk about you know the same topics, but you know if they're doing examples out of the book, that's that's clearly bad. But um, you know, read the book and read the book before you attempt the homework. That's where all the conceptual parts are. You know, it may take, it, you're not going to read it as though you were reading People magazine. You know, it's going to take you a little bit longer than that. So, but you know, the good thing, most sections that I think in a math textbook are, you know, five, six, seven, eight pages. But, you know, budget a half hour, 45 minutes to trying to read through it and really understanding the examples. Uh, my other bit of advice, when I started kind of actually getting interested in math, which was Still not when I was taking calculus. I was kind of slogging through it as well, to be honest. Um, when I did get more interested in it, um, when I started making really great grades, it's when I started reading the book regularly. Um, the other thing I would do that was a tremendous help to me was actually reading the book ahead of time. So, hey, if we're covering, you know, tomorrow's section is the product rule, you know, I would go in there having amazingly, wow, already read the product rule. It made the lecture much more enlightening. I didn't get lost after the first five minutes. Um, it took quite a bit of willpower to make myself do that, but I think I reaped, you know, you, you it, it took a little investment in time early on, but I got it back at the end for sure, because the problems were much easier, and hey, I actually understood what was going on. Um, so again, little tidbits. Again, another thing, if you read ahead and get stuck, hey, I've probably got a video on whatever it is, you know, feel free to take a look at it, see some of the mechanics, and again, I think uh, it'll just make the lecture make a little more sense. You've got to do homework problems, end of story. Um, I mean, there's no way... I mean, you can watch people do problems, they'll make perfect sense, and you say, yeah, I understand that, <clears throat> and that's 
perfectly true. I, I can, you know, I can follow a good argument, but if somebody says, you know, reconstruct it, that's much harder to do on your own. So, you know, you just have to do homework problems um, regularly. There's, there's no way around it. Some people have to do more. Some people have to do less. But if somebody's telling you they're not doing any problems at all, um, you know, they're just trying to impress you with their immense intellect, but they're, you know, clearly bullshitting you. So you've got to do problems. End of story. Um, go to class. Again, if your class is a huge lecture hall <clears throat> and it's a complete train wreck, I would say maybe in extreme circumstances don't go. Um, but you're always going to get something out of the lecture, even if it's quote unquote bad. Um, if it's a smaller class size, I would say, you know, anything to where they know if you're there or not. Um, even if they don't know your name, they may recognize your face. Um, if it's a small class size, go, you know, if you, again, if, if you have any, any interest vested in the class going well. Um, you know, there's nothing worse than a student doing poorly in a class and then asking for extra credit or help when they're not coming to class. A lot of professors will simply tell you to go away um, at that point. It just shows that you're... To them, it just looks like you're unmotivated, whatever the reason. Um, and unless you communicate to them something differently, that's, I think, what they're going to believe. So if you have reasons for not going to class, you know, chat with them, let them know. You're, again, you're, you, they may care, they may not, um, but it's not going to hurt. You're not going to be any worse for, for communicating with them. Um, one of the last things here, these classes can be really time consuming. I would say at least 10 hours a week for a three or four credit hour class. That's definitely not unreasonable. The rule of thumb I always heard was for about every hour you're in class, you should probably be spending about three hours um, outside of class. Um, I would say that is, that's certainly reasonable for harder classes. Um, you know, again, did I do it all the time? I don't know. Um, but certainly when I got serious, like I said, and started making, you know, really good grades and everything started clicking, I was putting in certainly a lot more time and the people I've had experience with certainly put in lots of time too. Um, you know the good people are good because they put lots of time into it. Certainly sometimes there's a little bit of natural ability there as well. Um, of course that's the case but usually more than anything it's just tons of hard work that people don't see that leads to success. So, um, I don't know. I hope some of these little tidbits help you, maybe a little insight into what to expect. Again, these are only my experiences, um, both as being a student and a teacher. Um, so, take it, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But if you have any questions or comments, um, feel free to post them and I'd be happy to discuss things with you uh, further. But if it is your first math class, good luck. I hope it great goes, uh, goes, goes very well for you.